Maybe in another time or space, you killed me, but not this one. Wraith was one of the hardest characters. Ooh. Yeah. Oh my god. Like when you guys finalized on the design of it's a person who travels between uh, two points in space, yeah. goes into the void, and she hears voices in her head. Yeah. I was like, how am I supposed yeah. to contextualize that? So it was it was phase was a very contentious point on this project. Like we went through this character went through probably more iteration than I think any other character. Yeah, we restarted and Ray three times. When we were first experimenting with the concept of characters, we were pulling abilities from Titanfall 2. The first thing that we had in there was was Titanfall 2 phase shift. It was rough because Titanfall 2 phase shift, there's no trail. So you have a person who disappears, reappears at some other random point in space, and can immediately just go guns up and, and hose you. From a learnability standpoint, like, what do I do about this? And the answer is like, well, don't let Wraith get, get anywhere near anywhere you. Near you. Yeah. Just like run away. <laughs> which, or, which is not a yeah. valid or fun yeah. method to play the game. I mean, that, that's why you made it so that like there's a significant delay yes. between when she comes out of phase and, and when the guns up. Yes, yeah, so we want the character to be a phase skirmisher. So she's all about not presenting a solid target for people and not committing over committing to fights. Wraith loses when she over commits to a fight. She's much more about playing the peripheries, harassing from the side, harassing from the rear. She's going to use it to either make lateral movements or uh, cautiously aggressive movements where she might use it to go from like here to some cover up in front of her, but she's not going to go directly up into your face, pop into existence, and then just shotgun you. Like it, right. And so if you lose track of a Wraith, you should be concerned. Wraith was the hardest character for me to find the focus mm -hmm. on. The voices in the head presented like a real problem because our game is a sci-fi game. It's not a fantasy Spooky, game. Spooky, scary ghost right, game, Right, so yeah. it can't be like spirits. So I was watching Donnie Darko, actually, and then it kind of like hit me, what if the void is a window mm -hmm. into infinite dimension? Yeah. And what she's doing is stepping out of this dimension into this void space that's a window into every infinite other dimension and then stepping back in, right? Yeah. And then when she's in that window, she can somewhat see into, you know what I mean, like other possibilities and yeah. things like that. In the void, you see little ghost images of Wraith. That's basically infinite versions of her from other dimensions also passing through the void at the same time. And that's what the voices are. They're basically yeah. seeing through a window and being warning you, like, yeah. hey, they see you. You know, Wraith receives voices about whenever you are being fired at, whenever you're being looked at, grenades, traps, all of this stuff. And the idea was is that um, the portal allows you to move an entire squad. And when you first start using it, it feels highly um, situational. But the more that comfortable you get with it, the, the more applications you have. If you just think of it uh, as risking only one person while moving three people as a value proposition, it becomes very... Uh, useful in a wide range of scenarios. The combination of being able to hear when someone's aiming at you and then being able to phase out and place the portal. The, the, the idea was is that you can charge a sniper, you can charge a machine gun position, that sort of thing if your squad is pinned down and move everybody either up on the position or around the flank or out of harm's way. And you, you can really pick uh, your fights in a lot of ways with Wraith. And from a mechanical standpoint, she's actually kind of an interestingly selfless character in some ways in that she's risking herself to save everybody else because she's the only person who is can actually, move can yeah. move forward and is fully aware of all the consequences of the situation. Right. Um, it, it's funny you bring up uh, using yeah. the ultimate and the tactical at the same time. Yes, yeah. Because uh, this was one of the first characters we created and that led to us changing our animation systems. Most of the time we animate the hands like in the first person view together. Mm -hmm. And since design wanted to be able to use you know, the portal, but at the same time be able to activate the tactical, yeah. we needed to switch up our animation system and it's a readability thing for the player as yeah. well. I can always learn that like, okay, I'm using the tactical now, I'm using the portal. It just helps reinforce, you know, yeah. like the UI and everything else when everything works together, yeah. actually. 